Hey guys, it's me Nikki. What up? Uh, um, as you can see, I've had a haircut. So let me know what you guys think. And I'm getting straight into the questions. Blah, 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 blah. Um, but yeah, haircut. I thought I needed a bit of a change. Some people suggested that I should try a fringe. I don't know if I like it. Um, I have had mixed feelings about it since I've done it. As the guy was cutting it, I was like, yay, I love it. And then now, then I cried when I got home because I lost like a lot of hair. Like my fringe was long. Um, so what, you guys tell me what you think. Is, is it a yes? Is it a no? I don't know yet. I'm still trying to figure it out. Uh, but that's not what I want to talk about today. Well, it, it, it comes into it, but not quite. Um, okay, so yeah, so here, cool. Um, so, I just want to fill in the last couple of days. It's been quite an emotional couple of days for me. Um, I don't know why, but I have cried more in the last couple of days than I have probably since I've started my transition. Um, so, I'm going to run through it. Maybe you guys can help me as to why you think I've been so like emotional. But let's go through it. Okay, so it started when I cut my hair. Um, cut my hair, I thought I loved it, then I got home and cried. Then Caitlin was like, no, it looks really nice. Then I liked it again, then I hated it again. Um, I kind of think it makes me feel a bit draggy, draggish, I don't know. Um, maybe once it grows out a bit, it'll be a bit better. But at the moment, I'm kind of like, I mean, an orange. Like now I think it looks nice, but I know like in 10 minutes I'm going to be like, I hate it. So, um, yeah, so I started with that, cut my hair cut, cried, and I don't normally cry over things like that. I don't normally, but like, for me, my hair is such an important thing for me. I know it's stupid, but it is. So that made, brought on the first bit of emotion. Then, um, then it was Caitlin's birthday on Thursday. Yay! <laughs> so everyone wish her happy birthday. Um, and that was cool. Um, I think everything was okay then. Then came Saturday. Friday was a normal day. Then came Saturday. Saturday I got asked to do a shoot for Top Billing Magazine, which is a really big magazine here. Well, TV show. It's a lifestyle TV show. And I did a photo shoot and I made some cool celebrities and cool, just cool people in general. And then afterwards I decided to go have lunch with the guys and my laptop got stolen. And not even my laptop. Kate, Kate, Caitlin's laptop got stolen. I was using hers. And um, and so stupidly, like it wasn't a violent like gun at anything. I was just I had it sitting next to me, and a guy sat behind me, pretended to be on his phone, and swapped out his bag for my bag. Got up and walked out, and he did it. He like sat right underneath the CCTV, the video cameras and stuff, and he laughed and smiled and basically waved at people as he walked out, and that was the laptop gone. So. Well, it turned out to be a cool shoot, it turned out to be quite an emotional day because I felt like a complete idiot and naturally I got someone else's laptop stolen, someone that I love's laptop stolen. So I naturally cried, you know, because my emotions are mad at the moment. Um, and I cried and I cried and I cried and I had to wait for security and I had to do all of this and, and then eventually I went home. And now Saturday was my birthday party. Um, it wasn't, my birthday was on Monday, it was on the 13th, but we had our party on Saturday. So it was like kind of a joint party for Caitlin and I. And Caitlin was like, okay, you know, we're going to go for dinner. And, you know, just you and I, and then we'll all go to a club later where all of our friends will join. Well, that's what I thought was going to happen. So I got home after a really emotional day. I didn't even want to go out at that point. I was just like, let's just cancel and we can just, you know, have pizza and stay at home and do nothing. Because that's what I felt like. Um, I hated the world, quite honestly. Um, but Kayla was like, no, let's go, let's go, let's go. And as we got there and we got to the restaurant, I realized that Kayla had thrown a surprise party for me. Yay! And there was like a whole bunch of my family there and a lot of friends and a lot of people I didn't expect to be there. Um, and like my oldest friend, Derek, who like, I've known for like 14 years. He's the only person, kinda. Like there are other friends from school and stuff, but I wasn't really friends with them then, but I am now. But Derek, I was like best friends with then, and I'm still friends with him to this day. Um, he's like one of the few people who have been like, oh, okay, this is who you are, okay, whatever, cool. And although I don't, I don't, but I don't get to see him that much. Like we aren't as close as we used to be, but we're still friends and I kind of take that as it is. Um, at least it's something. 
but so I got to see him so naturally as I walked in I almost burst out crying again because after such a terrible day this is like the coolest thing in the whole world like Caitlin if you watch this I love you a lot and that was an amazing thing for, to do like no one's ever done that for me really um, okay so had an amazing dinner with family and friends and you know like and Trent and Tyler were there and Luke and Amy and, and like my family my mom my aunt my gran and one of my mom's friends and um, and Caitlin's brother and a couple of his friends and so it was a really cool night it was really cool the tequila was flowing I love tequila I don't really drink though so like tequila me great cool but after an emotional couple days probably not the best thing so anyway then this fight breaks out outside with Caitlin's brother now he's a big guy he's really really tall really really strong um, but I used to be a fighter. I used to be a cage fighter. I used to be a bouncer. I used to, like, it's what I used to do. And I really don't like my friends being taken advantage of, especially by drunk assholes. So I went outside. Naturally, by this point, I was a little bit drunk. Um, I went outside and I kind of got involved. Um, and I pushed the guy away and he tried to get past me and then I ended up choking him a bit and then then he kind of like realized that I wasn't playing and then he kind of left and that was the end of it. And everyone was like, yay, Nikki, you did it. And I went inside and burst out crying. <laughs> I went inside and burst out crying because this all happened outside. Um, I went inside and burst out crying because it reminded me of the old me, which is not who I am anymore. I'm not that person. You know, I'm, I like fighting and I like the, the physical aspect of it and I like the, the technicality behind it and all of that, but I'm not a fighter. I'm not that kind of fighter anymore. I don't like to get involved with situations like that, but I felt I had to this time, um, probably just because I was drunk. It probably would have been perfectly okay. Um, so I burst out crying because it reminded me of the old me. Also, subconsciously, I was like, this was a big, full-grown man, and he was scared of me, which kind of took away my femininity for a second. Like, I felt like what have I done like I'm obviously not as girly as I thought I was or looked as feminine as I thought I did because this guy was scared of me granted I'm scary of my fringe and my tattoos and I am badass but like I didn't it wasn't a cool feeling not for me anyway so I cried I'm not like <laughs> I'm like cried anyway I like calmed myself down and like I got hugs from Derek and Caitlin was like interview and like I felt good again and then we went to the club. And the club that we always go to is Babylon. It's my favorite place. I like the people there. It's a gay bar. So there's often not normally much shit that happens. Um, you know, people are generally quite friendly there. Um, you know, so I was like, safe. You know? And we went there and we partied and we danced and we drank and we, you know, it was great. And I, like, I actually got to let loose for a little bit. I got to just dance with Caitlin and her and I both got drunk. We never do that because always one of us is driving. So we both finally got to be drunk and we both finally got to dance together and I got to see my friends and it was great. And then like towards the end of the night, some guy stops me um, while I'm walking to, towards Caitlin and stuff. And he stops me and he like grips me by the arm and he goes, listen, no offense, but you're like the perfect drag queen. Like you, you're like the epitome of a drag queen. I mean, you don't even try look female. You just, you know, you're so like confident in looking like a man dressed like a woman. Like, well done to you. You're like perfect. You're nailing it. And like at first I was like, um, and he was like, yeah, I hope that you don't take offense then. And I was like, well, um, no, but I'm transgender. So like I am trying to look female. And he was like, oh, well, sorry, but you, you I mean, you're nailing the drag queen thing. And I didn't quite know how to respond to that. So I was like, okay, whatever, and walked away, and went and danced with Caitlin for like a couple of minutes, and then I was like, it act, I, once again, I got overwhelmed, and went and sat down and burst out crying, and I cried because the, the, this guy who didn't know me from a bar of soap, so there was none of this like, I know your journey, so I respect your journey, I respect your, you know, you want to be called she, so I respect that, so you're a woman because you say you're a woman, and I, you believe you're a woman, so I say you're a woman because you, you, you know, there's, this guy was completely subjective, didn't know me from a bar of soap, and to him, I really looked like a guy in woman's clothing, and this completely negated my entire existence, basically, because he just 
subtracted my entire transition. Everything I'd, I've tried to accomplish in the last couple of years, we got because I, you know, he basically in my mind he just compared me to what I looked like two years ago, where I was did look like a guy in drag, and um, so I burst into tears. And this time, like tears, tears, like angry tears, sad tears, and uh, just, just tears, like beyond. I haven't cried like that, I think, since the, like the first couple of months of my hormones. I haven't cried like that since I got kicked out of home and all of that. Like these were tears, tears, and um, and naturally, they, I had a couple of trans friends there, and they were like very supportive. And the the best thing that they did was they didn't say anything. They just sat there and put their arms around me and just sat. Which for me was the best was the best thing because I didn't want to hear anything. I didn't want to hear anything. And then my mom came and no offense to my mom and no offense to any of the other people who tried to console me. But if you're not transgender, you don't understand. And my mom came and she tried to make me feel better. And she said to me, you know, isn't it great how you could be both? And this upset me even more. Because I don't want to be both. I don't want to be a man and a woman. I don't want to look like a man and a woman. Yes, there are some people who thrive on that aesthetic. You know, there are people like Jeffree Star who like just thrives on both and you can shoot a voice with the beard and the makeup and the hair and it's just stunning, you know. But they, they, that's their brand. I'm not going for that. I want to be seen as female and only female. I don't. I'm not greedy. I don't want the whole package. I just want the one half. So naturally, in my drunken state and my emotional state and all of that, I freaked out at my mom. So mom, I'm sorry, but just in future, don't be like, how cool is it, is it to be both? You know. But I know you were just trying to help, and I was very emotional and I was very drunk, so I stormed off. And I ran outside and I carried on crying by myself and at this point I was just like leave me alone world I don't want actually anything to do with anyone and Then one of the guys who was part of the fight earlier one of Caitlin's brother's friends came and he like you know arms over me and he's just like you know like It doesn't matter if people see you as a female or a male or you're a beautiful person and again in my very drunk very emotional state I was like but how you're perceived in society is what you are. We don't live in a perfect little world where people are like, oh, you have a beautiful soul and, you know, you're a beautiful... Like, no. Unfortunately, how we perceived is how we are. Well, anyway, this is how I thought. I know it's not the case. I know that in my heart, I am female, and that should be all that matters. But at the end of the day, we are all just looking to be accepted. You know, everyone is looking to be accepted in some way or another. And that's all I wanted at that moment, was for someone to go... Nicole, you're a beautiful woman. That's it. Just that's it. And then just let me cry and I would have cried myself out and I would have been fine. But to be like, you're a beautiful person, it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman. And what, how cool is it that you get to be both? And like these are all things that I didn't want to hear at that point because that's what the guy just called me. You know, he just said to me that I'm, I'm an amazing man dressed as a woman and like both, yeah. And that's not what I wanted to hear anyway but again I was highly irrational and highly drunk and highly emotional so naturally I freaked out so then I got really upset then Caitlin came and Caitlin I, I listened to because Caitlin has kind of been with me there from the beginning I know my mom has and everything as, as well but Caitlin also knows how to deal with me um, so she came and everything like that and I was like okay let's go back inside and drink I was just like I'm just gonna get even more drunk I'm just gonna drink till I pass out um, and then we went inside and one of my mom's friends was like, oh, stop being the drama drag queen that you are. Obviously meaning it in a lot of jest. But at, like where I was at that point, I didn't take it that way. And I kind of freaked again because I was like, God, why is everybody just calling me a drag queen tonight? I'm not a drag queen. And at this point, I rushed out again. And I was like, fuck it. I'm done. I'm out of here. I'm going. And then at this point, all of my friends were leaving and I felt even more emotional because I was like, all my friends are leaving because I can't stop fucking crying. So I'm now just being ridiculous and chasing all my friends away, which is what I always do. Um, you know, I, 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 it's probably not the truth, but in my mind, I have no friends because I always chase them away. Derek is an exception. And there are lots of friends who I used to be friends with who like have come back and stuff, but I, I don't have like close, close friends. 
Um, I have Caitlin, but she wants to get married to me, so she's kind of forced into it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, but like, I don't have close friends. Like, close, close. We have a couple friends, and we have... But Derek's kind of like the only friend that I've had my whole life. Kind of. Like, half my life. And, um... You know, but people always come in my life and then go, and then come in my life and then go, and I've just kind of put that down to people just... I'm not one of those people who have lifelong friends. It's just... I'm not like that. I have, like, fair weather friends. I have friends that are there for a bit and then go. My friends who watch this, I'm not talking about you. I do have a few friends. I am stating that. But mostly, you know. Anyway. Um, so I was like, fuck it, I'm going. So now I was upset that... My friends were all leaving because I was an emotional wreck. I basically had a breakdown. I was upset that my laptop, my Caitlin's laptop, got stolen. I was upset that my hair was bad. I I think my hair makes me look like a drag queen, so that added to that. Um, then in the car we left, and I didn't say goodbye to Caitlin's brother, who was like the last person who was staying there. So then I started crying about that. Um, then I came home and I made a video, and I watched it today. It's terrible, which is why I'm making another video. Because I was just like, <laughs> kind of for like 20 minutes. It's bad. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of what's happened up until now, up until today. Today, and then I was cool yesterday, and then today, like, as I woke up, I kind of, I got a message from someone who's like, how can you be depressed and have body issues if, you know, you're always putting up selfies and you're always putting up pictures of yourself and you're always putting up videos and you always and okay and then Monday was my birthday so I'm, I'm, I'm backtracking Monday was my birthday it was beautiful Caitlin really spoiled me I got a little Groot hold on I am Groot he's so cute I'm gonna put him outside his box soon and I got Caitlin Tina for her birthday Hey, so Groot and Tina live together. Anyway, um, so Caitlin spoiled me and I got a, very spoiled from my friends and family in terms of money and stuff for a camera bag that I really want to get. So Monday was cool. Um, I was highly embarrassed Sunday and Monday because of the way I acted on my birthday. But luckily my friends are quite cool. Anyway, uh, but Monday was spent dropping off camera gear and going to police stations and things like that because of that. So it was a good birthday, but it, you know, Caitlin made it as magical as she could and I am really grateful for that. Then today, Sunshine was like, how can you really be depressed if you keep putting up selfies? Because, you know, if someone who suffers from body dysmorphia and depression shouldn't act like that, I have friends, you know, and as someone who's actually gone through it, you know, I don't agree. And I had to say to her, I was like, listen, just because I don't like Barrow myself into a hole when I'm depressed and I don't hide away from the world and I don't doesn't mean I'm not depressed doesn't mean I don't suffer from depression I'm not always depressed but the last couple days week or so I have been but I'm trying to show people that when you're depressed you don't have to hide away that that's the easy way out, is to just close yourself from the world. And people deal with depression differently. I deal with my depression by talking to a camera, and then this camera, the SD card goes into my computer, the computer uploads a video to YouTube, and then people watch it and I respond, if I can. That's how I deal with depression. My camera is my therapist. Be it taking photos, or be it making videos, that's how I vent. Um, doing little mock photo shoots of myself, that's how I vent, because if there is a good photo, it makes me feel better about myself. My whole life is a documentary. Um, you know, so... I take lots of photos. It's not because I love myself, it's because I'm documenting my journey. And it's also showing other people who suffer with depression that it's okay to put yourself out there. It's actually better to put yourself out there. As opposed to being a recluse and not talking to anyone. I had a friend a couple of years ago who shot himself, and no one knew it. No one expected it. No one, he didn't tell anybody, so no one suspected that he was upset or depressed. It took everyone by surprise. So I don't want to go that route. I've done that route. I've cut myself to shreds. I've done the drinking and the alcoholism and stuff like that. I, you know, today, after drinking Saturday, today I wanted to drink so bad because I felt so shit about myself. You know, and I'm just like, it would be so easy just to walk to my clubhouse and go get fucked. 
but that's the easy thing to do. <laughs> the hard thing is to go, I don't need that, let me just deal with my emotions as best I can. So I sat and watched YouTube and cried and edited photo. So, um, and I'm not attacking you for the person who sent that message, I'm just explaining it to other people so that they understand that I'm not vain, I'm just trying to put myself out there to help other people who might be going through the same thing. She also said, how could I put up photos on myself with a beard? It's the same as me putting up video YouTubes with my voice. It just goes to show that I'm not perfect. Um, you know, I think a lot of people do look at me with a preconceived idea of, oh, but she's so lucky because she's pretty and she's this and she's that. I'm not. I don't consider myself pretty. I hate my nose. I hate my jaw. I like myself very specifically to make myself look slimmer. I can't tell this crap out of my face. I am... Um, by no means comfortable with myself but I have put myself out there to show other people that it's okay to have a bit of self-doubt and still be outgoing because the more outgoing you go you are the more likely you are to find some form of comfort within yourself so I am NOT 100% perfect I am NOT always happy I am depressed not often but I do get depressed um, and yeah, I put up a photo for my birthday with all my presents and things and I happen to have my beard um, because I didn't want to shave just for that. Like, uh, it wasn't a photo shoot. It was just my presents and I was just saying thank you and why can't I have a beard if I have to? Trust me, it didn't make me happy, but my skin is also really sore from shaving. So, you know, anyway. So today, I just got very depressed again because they've realized that I am never going to be seen as a woman. Not going to happen. I may look like a woman. I may sound like a woman if I talk with my voice. I can move like a woman. I have boobs like a woman. I have makeup like a woman. But I will never be seen as a woman. Um, at best, a transgender woman, in which case people go, oh, you're so proud, so proud, you're so brave. But when it comes to me going to the bathroom with them, they'll freak out. Um, I am engaged to Caitlin, but guys freak out as well. You know, I will never be seen as that. I, I, out of all the guys I know, I think there's three who will hold the door open for me when I go through. The rest, I'm just seen as another guy, which is fine, because I'm pretty much duty. I, 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 I am one of the boys. But I'm not one of the boys. I'm still a girl. I still cry. I still have emotions. I still have feelings. But because I have a dick, I'm a boy. And that's how it will forever be. Yeah, I said it. I said the word dick on YouTube. Um, there's no one under any false illusions. That that's, you know, I've been quite open with the status of my surgeries and things like that. But yeah, so I came to that realization today that I will always be seen as a boy or a trans girl, but never a girl. And that got me quite depressed today. Um, again, more tears. I don't know why I'm crying so much, but the tears are there. Um, there's stockpiles, apparently. I haven't cried for like two years, so now they're all coming. Stockpiles are full. Um, so yeah, so I'm. It's been quite an emotional day. Uh, 